those of you who, who know me or have come to know me through these things will probably know that occasionally, or quite a lot actually, I get um, obsessions. And my obsession a few years ago was with the Voigtlander Prominent, and it started in Holland, of all places, where I bought this at a fair called Houghton. Does anyone remember anyone else used to go to the Houghton Fair? Anyway, I bought this uh, Voigtlander Prominent outfit, which you can see has got a nice little camera with it, got a prominent one, several lenses, um, filters, a place to put your film lens, with, et cetera, et cetera. And that got me going. So first of all, of course, I had the camera that came out of the outfit. Uh, the prominent one was first made in 1950. This one is a little later, you can tell that because it's got an accessory shoe that was made in 1953. Um, but what was nice about the one that I got there, as you can see from this, it had the 1.5 notch-on lens on it, which is really quite valuable these days, didn't know it at the time. So having got the Voigtlander one, I then had to have the uh, the prominent two. This one was made in 1958. It's a little bit bigger. It's a truly nice camera. The main difference between this and the previous one is it's got viewfinder frames for 35, 50, 100, and 150 millimeter lenses. So there was quite a few lenses came with that kit as you saw, but of course then I had to search out the other lenses. And this is what I've got at the moment. There's there's, there's three 50 mil standard lenses at the bottom you can see there. The F2 Ultron is probably the most common. The 1.5 Nocton came with the camera, rather nice. And the 50mm 3.5 colour scope bar. Up the top, we've got a 35mm scope on, a 100mm diner on, and a 150mm super diner. So those are the basic lenses, which I've put together with the, with the prominent. And then there's a viewfinder. Um, the one on the right is called a contour viewfinder. You've probably come across one of these before, but if you haven't, Mm. Explain that when you look through it, all you see is this and complete blackness and frames for different distances to allow for parallax. What you do is you use the viewfinder with both eyes open so that the, um, the frames which you've just seen in the black then become superimposed over the actual view. And once you get used to it, it is a really nice way of uh, viewfinding. So I like that. Um, the one on the left is the turn it three. It's a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to leave it for right now, and I'll come back to it um, right at the end, because it's better to demonstrate it live than to try to describe it. Um, one of the interesting things about the lenses is that there are two bayonets for, for them. Um, there's an inner bayonet mount for, for standard lenses, and there's an outer bayonet for all the other lenses and various accessories. And as you can see there from the back of, uh, there's a 50 mil standard on the, on the left, 100 mil diner on on the right, and you can see the, the two different settings. Um, there's the top plate, and you need to look at this to see how the thing focuses. So on the left here, you have a knob, which you turn to focus. And as you focus, the whole of the shutter mechanism and the lens moves backwards and forwards. That's when you're using the internal bayonet for the 50 mil standard lenses. When you're using one of the other lenses, you stick it on the outer bayonet, and as you turn that little knob, it still operates the viewfinder and the rangefinder, but it doesn't appear to move. And that's because what it's actually doing is the mechanism is pressing on this little collar here, which pushes in and out, and that in turn focuses the lenses. And I think that's absolutely typical of Voigtlander. Um, the other one is, this is a 150 mil Super Dynaron, which is different again, that one is completely manual focus, but you can still use the knob on the camera body to um, check the range finder and then reset it all manually on that lens. Um, you do of course need uh, the filters and the lenses. One of the th nice things about it is that all the mounts are the same size on all the prominent lenses. So all the filters and the lens would fit all the lenses, um, but you do have a couple of masks here which will fit onto the lens hood and mask it for different, uh, different focal lengths. Then we have the close-up devices. Here we have a bog standard uh, focal close-up lens, which fits in a normal way. This one now fitted is the proximeter or the proximeter, and I've never worked out how you pronounce that, so accept that. And what that of course does, if you don't know, is it's got a built-in um, close-up lens, which goes on the lens, and this arrangement then converts the viewfinder and the range finder accordingly. Um, that works on the 50 mil standard lens. This little gadget goes between that and the lens if you want to use it on the 100 millimeter lens. 
Then we've got the macro outfits. Um, there are two different ones. The, the one on the left here has got a 105 millimeter color scope actually built in to the device. You then put a 100 um, mil dyno on, on the camera and mount it on the top. And that gives you like a one-to-one -one, uh, close up here. The other one, slightly different, it's actually got a 50 millimeter standard lens. No, well, it doesn't, when it comes, it doesn't have a lens in it. it you, you take your 50 millimeter standard lens, put it in here, upside down, and then mount the 100 mil uh, dyno on top of it. And that gives you um, one to two, as you can see, a bit at the bottom there is actually smaller. Where else do we go? Ah, then we've got this strange device. Didn't know what this was when I first found it, but I had a look around and I discovered what it is. It's a microscope adapter. Um, I don't have, I have the adapter, but I don't have the microscope. So this came from a Portland uh, um, brochure or the, so there we are. Um, it's got a copying stand. This is particularly rare and uh, I was quite lucky to get this. So it's got various lenses. This is, uh, sorry, it's got various legs. So these are the shortest legs which mount on there. Then it's got two other sizes of legs which screw in there and make it absolutely enormous. And the idea is you set it all up, put whatever it is you're fo uh, photographing down here, stick this thing on the top so you can position it and you can focus it. And once you do that, you take that off mm -hmm. and you put the camera in its place there. So that's the copying stand. Um, the other thing is the mirror box, which has got its own 105 millimeter telemar lens and this turns it into a single lens reflex and you can use it in three ways you can use it straight here like this as a right angle viewfinder that you look down into you can use it like this by pushing this bit back and it folds back like that and it becomes an eye level contour finder like the one we looked at earlier or you can take this bit off entirely and you can put an eye level piece in its place so it then becomes an eye level single lens reflex. Um, the only other accessory which I've got, and I think you, you'll find, is the Ever Ready case. Now, I don't usually keep Ever Ready cases. When I, when I buy a camera, I put the camera on display and I put the case in the loft. But you have to keep this one because it's a bit special. It looks much the same as any, 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 else, any uh, other Ever Ready case until you look inside because it's actually got a built-in flash gun. So the camera fits in the case as normal. The lid folds down and there's a flash gun inside. And as I understand it, when uh, Voigtlander launched this, they got a lot of complaints because people said, well, if you take pictures of people with it, the light comes up from the bottom and gives you really nasty lighting on faces. And Voigtlander's answer is quite simply, you use it upside down. So there you go. Those are all the accessories that I've got. Um, I'm loath to say, but I think they're all the accessories there are. But I will actually now demonstrate, in the flesh as it were, the, um, the Turnit 3 viewfinder. So-called because it offers the field of view for three different focal lengths of lens. That's 35mm, 50mm and 100mm. And it does that by operating those flaps that you can see at the front and the back, while at the same time turning the whole thing through 180 degrees. The mask that you see at the front of the picture here also fits onto the Turnit 3, and that converts it for a field of view for the 150mm lens.